Hello, this is Hockey Bean, and today we are going to be reading some Rules Horror, which is exactly what I was planning to do yesterday, but I couldn't do because my computer decided to crash the recording, crash the browser, and basically just completely crash. If you liked this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. Rising Star Early Learning Academy Employee Rules Welcome to the Rising Star Early Learning Academy. I am so glad you have decided to become a part of our family. Before you schedule your orientation, let's go over our rules for our, our school's employee handbook. 1. All staff at RSELA must wear black. Bright colors are irritating. It will also help when the power goes out. 2. Teaching staff must arm themselves with a small spray bottle of holy water. The thing that crawls around the ventilation system hates it. We hope it's deathly allergic to it. 3. Students must be in the schools probably before uh, probably at 9.15 a.m. If it's past 9.15 a.m. and you see any children on the playground, shut the blinds of your classroom and call the principal immediately. 4. If you're sobbing, coming from your classroom closet, call and escort these students out of the room. Go to the nearest classroom for the day. Your classroom will not be safe. Five. If the power goes out at any point during the day, hide. It's hunting again. Your black, your black clothes will help you stay hidden. It can't see very well. Five B. Just because it can't see well doesn't mean it can't hear well. Its hearing is incredible. Be very quiet. Five C. The staff have tried everything to destroy it. No weapon can harm it. Your only chance of survival is to stay quiet and hide. Six. This muscle is at 2.30 p.m. All students must be off the school property by 2.30 p.m. That's when the principal becomes hungry. 7. From 2.30 to 3 p.m., the principal feeds. Pray he doesn't find you. 8. All staff must clock out at exactly 3 in the afternoon. The custodians will clean up any mess left behind. They don't mind eating the leftovers. 9. If you come back the next day to find an empty wooded lot where our Early Learning Academy is located, go home and forget you ever saw a wretched place. Thank whatever god you pray to that you were spared a horrible fate. I hope you will live, laugh, and learn with us here at Rising Star Early Learning Academy. Welcome to the team! This one I really like because it's based off a really, really interesting animation I saw when I was a little bit younger. Well, actually not that long ago. How to survive your family. You should have realized by now that your home situation is not ideal. Nobody cares about you here. You have to fend for yourself. The only safe area in your house is your room. You should remain here at all times unless you need to go eat or go to the bathroom or some other reason. When outside your room, follow these rules to survive your three family members. Grandfather. Grandfather is a smoking addict who also struggles from blindness. Because of this, he usually just stays slunched over in, in a chair listening to the television. 1. Don't make any noise or he will notice you. Avoid stepping on any garbage or junk he leaves on the floor. Stepping on those make n noises as you may have expected. 2. If he does notice you, he'll probably ask you to hand over his cigarettes. Hand them over and don't hesitate. It's best to not have him angry. This should be, ob three. This should be obvious already, but don't turn off his TV. 4. Sometimes grandfather will have trouble recognizing you. If this happens, or one of the previous two rules are broken, he will get angry and start chasing after you. Quietly walk away from him, and he won't find you. Father. Father will keep mostly to himself in his chamber full of mirrors. He's the least threatening of your family. Still not safe to be around though. 1. If by chance he notices you, pretend like you're listening to him and care. 
He loves to talk about himself. Try your best to not seem annoyed. 2. Don't break any of his mirrors. If one of his mirrors happens to break, stay away from him for the rest of the day. Mother. Mother is an alcoholic and physically abusive. If she is the most dangerous of all your family. 1. Mother may be anywhere around the house, but she will most likely be in her room. Avoid her at all costs. 2. If you see her, but she hasn't seen you, quietly make your way to your room. 3. If she does see you, brush your room as if your life depends on it. Because it probably will. 4. If you're unfortunate enough to fall into her grip, don't try to break free. She has a surprisingly strong grip. And attempting to escape will only make the punishment worse. Five. When she lets go of you, rush to your room before she reconsiders. Keep your door locked from inside of your room and barricade the door with your chair if you're not using it. Only eleven more years of this hell before you're free. Yep, that's Opal. By the way, Opal is a, an animation where those three characters are actually in it. When the sky rained blood. A month ago, the sky started raining in red a month ago. At first, it was startling, but nothing more than just an odd phenomenon that nobody could make sense of. We all went inside and carried on with our day from there, expecting things to return to normal soon. We all made a mistake. Blood never saw pouring from the sky, but worse, it became something else. Something worse. Each drop late converged with those around it to create creatures that stalked the outside. Nobody dared exit their homes except for you of the brave and foolish, who would soon become mutilated examples of why we all decided to stay put. The world outside, the world turned upside down a month ago. It's not just a bloody rain, but everything is going rotten. Venturing outside for food or clean water is difficult with the entities who don't let anything escape their sight, and any non-bottled water is contaminated. Hope isn't a word that exists nowadays. By some stroke of luck, however, we have one even grace. Electricity, which is how you can read this note that's been sent out to whoever can see it. We've survived long enough to create some rough guidelines on what we can and cannot be on what can and cannot be done, and in these times anything is better than nothing. Follow this guide and you should be fine, but please don't let your guard down or get complacent. Basic survival. Rule one first, don't drink any water that hasn't been that wasn't in a bottle before the rain. Most if not all of it has been tainted and read by the rain, and every person who drank it is no longer with us. From what we've been able to gather, drinking the water will lead to a person's blood draining out, before they inevitably die and are resurrected as one of the entities that stalks the lands. Do not drink the water. Rule 2. Food that is overly tainted red has likely been contaminated by the rain. The same applies to this as it does as to the water, avoid eating food that is abnormally similar in appearance to blood, and try sticking to foods that have been secured in containers or tight wrapping. You may keep the lights on, on or make as much noise as you wish, as long as it stays in the house. The creatures of the rain do not seem to be particularly sensitive to noise or light, and will not attack your house as long as you remain inside. Rule 4. Those who venture outside cannot touch the rain. Anything that touches the rain which breeds will immediately catch attention of every single creature of the rain. It was what happened in one of the first who wandered outside. They seem to be permanently marked, and no matter how far they go, I have to start from here. Those adventure. They seem to be permanently marked, and no matter how far they go, those touched by rain will not escape the creatures created by it. Rule 5. Try to ration remaining food. Going out in the rain is extremely dangerous, and since there's no information about when the rain will end, it's best to assume that you're going to need all the food you have. Wasting food won't just end and, and badly, but may lead to your death. Rule 6. Voices are reported to have been heard by certain people, ordering them to return to the rain or join the creatures that have appeared. If you hear these voices, please ignore them. We do not know of what the purpose behind them is or who they're from. We do know what they advise you to do is will likely end it with your death. Rule 7. If you happen to bleed by any chance, whether it be from your nose or by a cut, immediately locate a container. 
Find napkins or some other fabric that can absorb blood, and try to keep the blood from your wound in that container. You must keep doing this until the wound has stopped bleeding, and must seal the container after you are finished to allow any blood to touch the ground will alert the creatures. Though we do not understand the reason why, we do know that alerting creatures will end in your death. We've struggled through the rain for a month so far, and though nothing has gone better, we are at least still alive. As long as we continue to draw breath, hope is not, isn't dead yet. Let's continue to wait for this storm to pass, and for life to return to some sort of normalcy. Best of luck to you, and please stay safe. If you notice a cut just uh, in the middle of that, that's because my computer decided to stop the recording midway through. Again. As you might have guessed, it's starting to go a little bit bad. I'm hoping that I can edit this together to make it a little bit better. You are not alone in your home. Hundreds of thousands of people are reported missing every year worldwide. Is your home your safe haven? Your happy place? A sanctuary to retreat to in the trials and uncertainties of life? Crush your psyche flat? Does being embraced in the air infused with the scent of your hand-picked candles and fresh laundry ease your mind and instill a sense of security? Of comfort? Does it really? What makes you certain the space under your roof belongs only to you? Can you say with confidence you are the sole inhabitant, and no one else? Nothing else is nestling within the nooks and crannies, invisible to you and your mortal eyes, completely unbeknownst to you? Have at all those times you lost an item for no particular reason, only to locate it far from its original whereabouts? The times when a kitchen faucet is supposed to shut off uh, operates on its own and doubles your water bill. The times your locked door creaks open. Are the responsible factors your random lapses of memories? Are they? Are they? Are they? Are they? Say it out loud. Say it with no hint of doubt. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. You can't, can you? Nobody can. Shh, be quiet. Don't glance behind you. Do you feel the shift in temperature? It's not the air of life you may see. The uncanny slippery slivering down your back isn't from perspiration either. Don't acknowledge the tongue. You wouldn't want to meet the rest of the body. You are temporarily safe. Your house made us elsewhere. It's imperative to refrain from exhibiting signs of fear. They would be pulled to its allure. The way maggots are to decay to roadkill under the scorching summer heat. Don't press your luck and adhere to the rules. The deception won't prove so useful next time. Rule 1. You will always be sleeping through the a night. There is no wrestling in the curtain cascading down by your windows. There is no peeping, no one peeping at you from behind it. There is no one drawing it up to elongate their separate neck into the room to leer at you. The whiteness of the the orb sander in his um, um, in the white grin are nothing more than reflections of the street lights then close to your home. You don't live in an alley. You don't live in an apartment 20 feet off the ground. There is no power outage. There is never a power outage. There is never a power outage. There is no wardrobe of door creaking open in the dead of night. Within its void-like darkness, you will be seeing no pallid, gaunt fingers ridden in, in a, writhing in a grotesque dance that leaves them cracking every second in your peripheral vision. The bundles of inky hair that spread out seven to crack between each flank of the wardrobe are yours. You do not have short hair. The footsteps spouting on your floor are from the scurrying mouse. The chattering and contorted giggles licking on your, your, 
ears, artichokes, and squeaks. They don't sound like a person trying to gargle with a throat slit open. Mice are not a threat. Mice are no reason to frighten. Mice live in the dark. Mice approach you out of their curiosity. Mice are never a danger. The humanoid figures living over you are induced by sleep paralysis. You don't feel the foulness of their disintegrated features. You don't feel the sickness of their peeled flaps on, of skin on your limbs. You don't hear them. They aren't whispering. They don't want to consume you. They are delusions. Delusions are not able to inflict physical damage. Rule 2. Nothing is wrong with your pets. Your dogs and cats don't bare their teeth for no reason. They detect mice, and it's their disposition to getting triggered by potential prey. It's in their genes. Nothing, nothing to get worried about. You don't feel goose flesh prickling beneath your sleeves whenever they display such instinctive behaviors. Your AC is in a bad shape, hence the unexpected reduction in of temperature. You don't hear the warped laughter that dollied by a self broken ancient instrument is in the room. There's no distorted wells that send shivers down your spine. There's no twisted figure with disjointed gait limping in your peripherals with an expression doused in agony. Your dogs and cats crawling under the furniture and cowering can be explained by the scent of coyotes that live nearby. Your house has thin walls. Coyotes have broken out of the city zoo. There's no mutilated humanoid figure dragging themselves across the floor or the ceiling on their multiple twisted, swinging limbs. Their neck isn't stretching in your direction and carrying their nauseating, hairless head along. There is no skin ripping. There is no bone cracking. There is no guttural wheezes, wheezes that don't resemble anything on a mortal plane gritted out through their all too many teeth. It's the coyotes. The coyotes are to blame. <laughs> your fish cannot survive for an extended period because you forget to change your water or you overfeed them. And don't be concerned when their population keeps declining. Some of the variants swimming in the tank are carnivorous. That's all. You find no monstrous entities clinging on the edge of your fish kingdom at night to terrorize them. It's dark. You can't even see your fingers, and your brain is simply feeding you twisted images to your imagination. You do not install lenses for the fish tank, and you certainly do not see gnarly fingers reaching down to seize a four fish, or a putrid tongue lapping up the water. The sounds stabbing through your ears are not of iterative animalistic moans, but the humming of the water filter. It's old. It's just old. It's looking like this thing might have a time limit before I have to start. That's going to be a little bit annoying. Your inanimate... Your ornamental items are inanimate and harmless. Mirrors are reflective items, which suggest that lights will bounce off them to trick your eyes occasionally. Yes, this is a light, and nothing else. You glance onto the surface and find a frail and coral incorporeal hand clamping in your shoulder, slightly tapping to catch your attention. It's the light, the red handprint manifesting itself for seconds before vanishing. It's the light, an elongated creature propping itself on endless insect aside at feet to march across your floor and behind your back before sliding its whole length into your cabinet. It's the light. You certainly do not hear sounds of sharp needle appendages scratching the floor, and you don't find any mark thereafter. Yeah, surely it's just the light. Your decorative dolls are plastic, hence they cannot turn towards you collectively as if they for some reason make unexplainable movements. I always remember that you were the one adjusting your usher a couple days earlier. You do not see any sickly hands reaching out from behind them to swivel any part of their body. The vibrancy of their nail polish, no, no fingers, no nail polish, no nail polish. The glints in their eyes of your figurine are from the lights 
glancing off the glasses reflect the material. Their eyes aren't painted, and yes, they have always been smiling in the first place. Their smile isn't frowning or staying with red before your very eyes. Dripping red has always been their exclusive features. You got them years ago, and your memories of them aren't the greatest anymore. Yeah, don't worry. You have a clown. A battery-powered one that is no longer in proper working condition. It's fine for it to hop up and down in any area of your house or appear at your doorstep. The haunting laugh laced with insanity is by another function. You got it as a Halloween decoration. Your furniture does not sprout human skin, nor can it undulate the way a living beings can. The elasticity and the softness is your imagination. You're tired after a draining day of work. You need sleep. You need to be in your room. You can't see any humanoid head popping up on the piece of furniture, and it doesn't grin or possess moving arms and wave at you while you're walking away. Hundreds of thousands of people vanish off the surface of the earth every single year, and the responsible factors are not always kidnapping or crying. Take care. Don't join them. Join them. Don't ever glance back. Baron the OP did this at 12 a.m. and their bed is next to the window and they have a freaking two meter stuffed octopus smiling by their side. Well, let's see if we can get to the next one. Oh no. <sighs> You're kidding, right? Hang on. So, the one I was about to read had actually been removed for bad grammar. So, instead of reading about this one, the following protocols were used when handling specimen, specimen data corrupted. Kingdom Animalia. Phylum Cordata. Class Glitched. Wow, that's a lot of glitchy stuff. Warning, facility at risk for habitat personnel. The specimen, one, the specimen should not be approached or interacted with by anyone besides the recovery team. Should you encounter it, quickly disperse your designated and capsicum atomizer. 2. If your atomizer is not available, produce a concentrated beam of light in its ocular area. Both effects should stun it long enough for your withdrawal. 3. Notify the recovery team about whereabouts as soon as you can. 4. Destroy any a communication device you carry. Do not underestimate its, its capability of using our technology should you be captured. Classified for recovery team only. 1. Incapacitate as soon as you can with your designated stun gun. Despite dangerous, the specimen is, has been marked as useful for our air and space program, as long as Rule 4 is not in place. 2. Never, under any circumstances, try to communicate with it. It is sapient. Highly cunning and dangerous, as been responsible for the destruction of countless civilizations after acquiring spacefaring and capabilities. Three, quickly notify Central Command if any communication device or system technology is found in its manipulators before or after setting the network signal will be shut down, leaving you stranded with it until backup arrives. The team leader is authorized to enact immediate field executions if Rule 2 is broken. The chain of, it, of command should progress if the leader is either incapacitated or is the one breaking the rule. 3a. Do not underestimate the specimen. Despite its stature, a number of limbs and soft muscle layer and frail endoskeleton is not to be underestimated. Analysis of landing artifacts have shown not only that it comes from a conqueror species, but also That society has been known to split the atom for over two centuries, including a highly bellic potential. Four, if so, a large specimen should not be 
should not reach its grace craft. If it is seen anywhere in a space carapace or craft activation is received, lethal for force is authorized and the creature should be stopped by any means necessary. I assume that an existential threat to every individual in this planet. And we're going to ignore the Universal Translator because... Well, funny enough, it's not as universal as they like to say. Just two more stories. Rules for shopping at Sweet Lolita. We are delighted to welcome you to Sweet Lolita. Within this magical space lies a secret to your holistic transformation, appearance-wise. And you would find yourself shedding away the, the instant normalcy to embrace the elegant princess that had always been residing inside you. Our assortments include a wide variety of Lolita-themed apparels, completed with elaborate jewelry and accessories, so rest assured you could find something befitting your needs, styles, and body type. But alas, our story has been around for quite some time. The age adds quaint qualities to its charm, but also invites anomalous entities to settle in. The following set of rules for be prepared should be able to protect you from them. And please kindly note that we would not assume responsibility for the consequences resulting from non-compliance. Of course. Corporations gotta cooperate, right? 1. The flooring of our story is made of superior grade wood and made this conducted regularly to eliminate any possibility of a creaking and cracking or releasing strange sounds under any steps. If the floor squeaks as you navigate the area and an unexplainable shudder or both sign your spine, please freely proceed to another section before the noise is, is escalated into laughter or sobs. 2. The decoration is consistent through our entire store, and the main color palette it for every space consists of warm tones only. If you happen to come across a room whose layout is a stark contrast to the rest, usually with Victorian and air aesthetic and cold bleak tones, pretend not to see it and walk away. It usually looks majestic with impotent fixtures and clothing items to appeal to the bystanders, but don't let it entice you. This room is not of our realm, and we cannot interfere with what transpires inside and will not be able to help you. 3. Agonizing moaning and desperate calls for help could occasionally be heard from the said room. Glance inside, and you might even see a sickly arm clawing on the carpeted floor behind the large decorations. Lay fingers convulsing and extending as though the owner is in great pain. Don't enter. You cannot help them. Clear the area at once if you don't want to join them. 4. The painting on the wall near the fitting room should always portray three sisters. If one is missing, don't enter. Even when you can wait to try on your new outfits, head somewhere else and wait around 15 minutes. She should be back by then. Upon your return, if you still notice her absence, calmly place the dresses you have down on the floor and retreat to the entrance. You are being followed. The apparel should serve as a distraction long enough for you to get away. 5. In the situation that you forget to check the painting before entering the fitting room, please be vigilant and mindful of your surroundings. If you hear and see nothing, you should be safe. She's not interested in you. However, if the worst comes to worse, you would constantly see a pale woman peeking into the room through the curtain in your peripherals. Her smile reaching her cheekbones and her black eyes boring into you. There would be suspicious rustling sounds accompanied with heavy breathing and crazed laughter. Do not panic. Proceed with the following steps and she should be away soon. Complain about your body type aloud, nitpicking on your imperfections and making up some if needed. She will no longer see you as a worthy prize when you do not have an ideal figure. Curse! Use expletives. Be creative! She dislikes unladylike specimens. Compare yourself with other women, making it clear that you are a background character in most gatherings, and others tend to use you as a foil to highlight them. As mentioned, she has no interest in imperfect women and would lose interest in you. Act natural, pretend that you are releasing bottled up emotions, and do not let her realize that you are attempting to trick her. Do not stop until you no longer feel her eyes on your back. 6. Our objective is to craft a comfortable and pleasant experience for cons for customers. We have notified all staff members not to follow people around and or 
or offer unsolicited assistance. If you find yourself approached by a young girl in a gothic dress who claims to be an employee, cut her off before she finishes any sentence. Refrain from physical contact. Do not let her grasp your arms. Do not look her in the eyes. Strongly reject all her suggestions. She will eventually apologize for the hassle and leave. Make sure to keep your eyes on her until she gets out of sight. That girl is a product of the strange room we referred to in Rule 2 and 3. She would try to drag you there if given the chance. We must emphasize that we cannot save you once the room claims you. 7. Our merchandise does not include wigs. Remember this, as you might find yourself in a section with countless mannequin heads wearing their hair in complex styles. Do not touch them. Do not come close to them. Do not look at them. You might see them turn towards your direction, blinking or smiling from the corner of your eyes, but do not spare a glance to confirm. Immediately go back to where you came. You'll hear faint voices tickling your ears as you leave and notice a mild metallic smell lingering in the air. But do not respond or show signs of fear. Okay, I'm starting to wonder what the heck that first part was then. Sorry. Alpha wear options are diverse, but we do not sell red high heels. If you happen to see pure air, do not try them on, despite how much they appeal to you. There is a reason for the vibrancy and brightness of their color. Our store use only use nine. Our store only use best mannequins for the display A section. There should not be a headless one with the full body among them. If you encounter a mannequin of this kind, we are terribly sorry for the inconvenience, but you have to cancel your shopping plan for the day and leave the establishment as soon as possible. Ignore the set for those behind you on the way out. It is bound to the store and will no longer pose a threat once you walk out of the door. 10. Coupons are provided to customers who have encountered unwanted situations in the store's conversations. Please check what's written on them carefully and return those mentioning hair or Victorian audience. Their to comply will lead to you being trapped in the room or becoming the newest addition to the wig section. There is nothing we could do to help you at that at point. Remember these rules well and you should be safe. We hope you have a fantastic time at Sweet Lolita. Right, I'm sure that um that store probably doesn't exist. <sighs> Rules for war. This is 11th of December. The filth attacked us today. I am one of the survivors of the ritual regiment. Lieutenant Control Officer Redacted. They told us they were going to send reinforcements. 1. Remove all your er, morals. This is war, no, no matter how brutal it is. This is crucial, as the enemy is filth. They do not speak our language, so we must speak theirs. 2. Do not have more or else your comrades will be crowned in heaven. We cannot have suicides! We have already had 9,106. That's over 9,000. Say it in the comments. Say the freaking meme. I dare you. Three. Only take one prisoner for a soldier. Do not overstock. Screams of mystery. Connection loss. Four. If you feel bad, remember you are fighting for glory, God and fatherland. Summed up. Don't have PTSD. Just be a psychopath and and say this. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Five. Connection loss. Screams click inking of titanium ends. Somebody chloroform it for God's sake. Six. Glory to Fatherland. That was R slash rules horror. And a little bit of my computer breaking in for no particular reason in the middle of one specific story and making a cut in this video. Which means that I have to figure out how to edit them into the same video. 
which might need a, a, a video editor of some sort. Anyway, if you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!